Dot. Crab finds sanctuary in biologist's Faraday cage, the biologist with a knack for electronics. In the bustling world of scientific research, where boundaries between disciplines often blur, one biologist stands out as a true Renaissance man. His name is Stephen Young, and his passion for biology is matched only by his exceptional skills in electronics. As I stepped into Young's laboratory in Edinburgh, I was immediately struck by the impressive Faraday cage that dominated the space. This intricate, shielded enclosure was no ordinary piece of equipment, it was a testament to Young's engineering prowess, designed to meticulously record the eye movements of a small crustacean. What sets Young apart is his ability to seamlessly integrate his expertise in biology and electronics. Rather than relying solely on off-the-shelf instruments, he takes great pride in designing and building his own specialized equipment, imbuing each device with a level of precision and functionality that commercial options often lack. Every good biologist should have a solid understanding of electronics, Young tells me, his eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. The insights we can gain from custom-built equipment are simply unparalleled. In his recently published book, Young has set out to share this philosophy with the scientific community. Far from a dry, technical manual, his work is a down-to-earth, practical guide that demystifies the world of electronics for biologists. He navigates complex topics with a deft touch, making even the most intricate circuit diagrams accessible to those without an engineering background. The purists in the electronics field may balk at my approach, Young admits with a chuckle, but I believe it's exactly what experimental biologists need. We shouldn't be intimidated by the technical aspects of our work, we should embrace them and make them our own. Young's passion for his craft is palpable, and it's this infectious enthusiasm that has drawn me deeper into his world. As I watch him meticulously adjust the components of his Faraday cage, I can't help but marvel at the level of care and attention he dedicates to every aspect of his research. In an era where scientific disciplines are increasingly intertwined, Young's story serves as a powerful reminder that the most groundbreaking discoveries often arise at the intersection of seemingly disparate fields. By bridging the gap between biology and electronics, he has carved out a unique niche, inspiring others to venture beyond the boundaries of their own expertise. Source. www.nature.com. Reflecting on Rwanda's genocide 30 years later, uncovering the lasting scars of Rwanda's darkest hour. 30 years have passed since the horrific genocide that tore through Rwanda, claiming the lives of an estimated 800,000 Tutsi people at the hands of armed Hutu militia and citizens. This unspeakable tragedy, often referred to as the worst atrocity of the late 20th century, left an indelible mark on the nation and its people. As researchers delve deeper into the aftermath of this devastating event, they are uncovering a tapestry of profound insights that extend far beyond the initial horrors. From the study of intergenerational trauma to the re-establishment of Rwanda's academic community, the lessons learned from this dark chapter hold the power to inform our understanding of genocide and its lasting consequences on societies. One of the most striking findings is the way the trauma of the genocide has been etched into the very DNA of survivors and their children. Scientists have discovered that the psychological scars of this event have been passed down through generations, manifesting in complex mental health challenges that continue to impact the Rwandan people. This intergenerational trauma, a legacy shared by survivors of all atrocities, underscores the need for robust mental health services and support systems to help communities heal. Alongside these profound psychological insights, researchers have also shed light on the remarkable resilience of Rwanda's academic community. Decimated in the aftermath of the genocide, the country's scholarly institutions have painstakingly rebuilt themselves, now boasting notable research hubs like the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences in Kigali and the soon-to-be-established African Medicines Agency. However, the journey has not been without its obstacles, as Rwandan scholars continue to face barriers in publishing their work in international journals. One exceptional initiative, the Research, Policy and Higher Education Program, has sought to bridge this gap, empowering Rwandan academics to share their expertise and perspectives on the genocide and its aftermath. By providing support and mentorship, this program has enabled dozens of Rwandan scholars to publish their research in peer-reviewed journals, shaping policy and sparking crucial dialogues on reconciliation and peacebuilding. As the world reflects on the horrors of the Rwandan genocide, it is clear that the work of researchers is vital in understanding the complex tapestry of trauma, resilience, and transformation that has unfolded in the decades since. 
By elevating the voices of Rwandan scholars and survivors, and fostering meaningful collaboration across disciplines, we can unlock a deeper understanding of the human experience in the face of such unimaginable cruelty. The lessons of Rwanda's darkest hour stand as a sobering reminder of the fragility of our world, but also the incredible strength of the human spirit to overcome even the most devastating of circumstances. As we continue to grapple with the ongoing threat of atrocities around the globe, may the insights gleaned from this tragic chapter guide us towards a future where the horrors of the past never again come to pass. Source www.nature.com Iran frees big cat conservationists in unexpected decision. Uncovering the truth, Iranian conservationists freed after six-year ordeal. In a remarkable turn of events, Iran has released four members of a conservation group who were imprisoned for six years for their work studying endangered big cats. This surprising move has not only brought relief to the individuals involved but also sheds light on the challenges faced by environmental activists in the region. The group, which includes Nilu Fabiani, a conservation scientist and former consultant with the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, and Human Joker, a biologist, were arrested in 2018 along with five other conservationists. Their crime? Conducting research on the Asiatic cheetah and Persian leopard in the country's national parks. The detention of these individuals sparked a worldwide campaign, with conservation organizations advocating tirelessly for their release. The case has been a stark reminder of the precarious position of those working to protect the environment, as the Iranian government viewed their efforts as a threat to national security. Morad Tarbaz, a businessman and conservationist with US-British Iranian citizenship who was also among the nine, expressed his joy at the news of his colleagues' release, saying, I am incredibly happy for them. We have all greatly suffered from the injustice that was done to us. During their incarceration, the conservationists faced a harrowing ordeal, including isolation, exhausting interrogations, and threats of torture and rape. Bayani, in particular, managed to complete a research project, interviewing other female political prisoners and exploring how climate change is perceived in an oil and gas producing state like Iran. The release of these individuals is a testament to the perseverance and resilience of the conservation community, as well as a glimmer of hope in the face of adversity. However, the story is not without its tragic elements, as the director of the Persian Wildlife Heritage Foundation, Kavas Said Amami, died in prison under mysterious circumstances just weeks after the initial arrests. As the world grapples with the urgent challenges of climate change and biodiversity loss, the plight of these conservationists serves as a stark reminder of the risks and sacrifices faced by those on the front lines of environmental protection. Their story underscores the need for greater international support and solidarity to ensure the safety and freedom of those dedicated to preserving our planet's precious natural resources. Source. www.nature.com. Unraveling the unregulated territory of AI-powered election campaigns. Uncovering the unsettling rise of AI-powered election campaigns. As the world braces for a pivotal year of democracy, with nearly 70 elections slated to take place, a concerning trend has emerged, the infiltration of artificial intelligence, AI, into the political arena. From Indonesia to Pakistan, the use of AI-generated, soft fakes, by political candidates is rapidly transforming the landscape of electoral campaigns, raising profound ethical concerns. Soft fakes, a term coined to describe eye-manipulated images, videos, and audio clips, are being employed by candidates to present a more appealing and likable persona to voters. These digital alterations, often created by the campaigns themselves, are a far cry from the malicious deep fakes associated with bad actors. Yet, their impact on the democratic process is no less disconcerting. In Indonesia's recent presidential election, the winning candidate, Prabowo Subianto, heavily relied on AI-generated cartoonish avatars to rebrand himself as the cuddly grandpa, effectively displacing allegations of his past human rights abuses. Furthermore, the use of deep fakes, including the virtual resurrection of Indonesia's deceased former president, Suharto, is believed to have contributed to Subianto's surprising victory. Across South and Southeast Asia, the trend continues unabated. Nigat Dad, the founder of Pakistan's Digital Rights Foundation, has documented the widespread use of AI written articles and deep fake videos by candidates in Bangladesh and Pakistan, humanizing them in ways they could not achieve in reality. These developments raise profound questions about the future of democracy. As Raman Chowdhury, 
the former director of the machine learning, ethics, transparency and accountability, Meta, team at Twitter, explains, the concerns go beyond just misinformation or fake news. The very nature of political campaigning is being transformed, with candidates leveraging AI to craft an image that may not align with their true character or actions. The path forward is not a simple one. Global guidelines and regulations around the appropriate use of generative AI, GAI, in elections are urgently needed, but striking the right balance between freedom of expression and democratic integrity is a delicate task. Content generation companies, social media platforms, and election regulatory bodies all have a role to play in establishing and enforcing these rules. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on us, the citizens, to develop a critical eye and a deep understanding of the potential pitfalls of AI-fueled election campaigns. We must resist the temptation to be swayed by the cute or funny soft fakes and instead demand transparency, authenticity, and a true representation of the candidates' values and policies. As the world watches the unfolding of this year's elections, the stakes have never been higher. The fate of democracy hangs in the balance, and the time to act is now. Source. www.nature.com. Maximizing media impact for research success, unleashing the power of media engagement, a transformative journey for an early career scientist. As a physical activity researcher at the University of South Australia, I found myself at a crossroads in my career. With a PhD under my belt and three years of dedicated research, I had amassed a wealth of knowledge, yet my voice remained largely confined within the scientific community. That all changed when a groundbreaking systematic review I co-authored sparked a media frenzy, propelling me onto the global stage and forever transforming the trajectory of my career. The study, published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, explored the profound impact of exercise on mental health. By synthesizing the findings of nearly 100 systematic reviews, we uncovered compelling evidence that physical activity can significantly alleviate symptoms of depression and anxiety, with higher-intensity workouts yielding the most substantial benefits. This revelation struck a chord with people worldwide, igniting a media firestorm that caught me by surprise. Suddenly, I found myself fielding requests for radio interviews, podcast appearances, and in-person talks, both across Australia and virtually for international audiences. What began as a serendipitous opportunity quickly became a strategic endeavor as I recognized the profound impact that media exposure could have on my research and career. Over the past year, my work has been featured in prestigious outlets like The Wall Street Journal, CNN, and Cosmos Magazine solidifying my reputation as an expert in the field of physical activity and mental health. This visibility has opened up a world of unexpected possibilities, from collaborations with researchers across Australia to industry partnerships with innovative startups. Through these media engagements, I've honed invaluable skills that have enriched my work both within and beyond academia. Crafting concise, engaging explanations of complex scientific concepts, using relatable analogies, and maintaining composure under pressure have all proved invaluable in my research, public speaking, and collaborative endeavors. While not all media interactions have been flawless, I've encountered oversimplified coverage and misinterpretations of my work, I've learned to be proactive in correcting inaccuracies and clearly articulating the objectives and limitations of my research. This delicate balance of embracing media opportunities while maintaining academic rigor has been a valuable lesson. As an early career academic, I've come to view media engagement as a powerful tool for amplifying my findings, building credibility, and fueling my career advancement. Rather than leaving it to chance, I've become strategic in promoting my work through various channels, from pitching my published papers to journalists to actively sharing my research on social media. The rewards of this proactive approach have been immense. The visibility, credibility, and transferable skills I've gained have not only propelled my research forward but also opened up a world of new possibilities. I'm grateful I stepped out of my comfort zone to embrace media exposure, and I encourage other early career scientists to do the same. The potential to supercharge your research career is well worth the initial discomfort. Source. www.nature.com Unraveling robotic creation with phase diagram expertise. Unraveling the secrets of robotic synthesis, mastering phase diagrams for inorganic oxide materials. In a groundbreaking development, a team of talented scientists has unlocked the key to deciphering the intricate world of robotic synthesis, paving the way for unprecedented advancements in the creation of inorganic oxide materials. The findings, 
published in the prestigious journal Nature Synthesis, reveal how a deep understanding of phase diagrams has empowered researchers to navigate the complex landscape of material fabrication with unparalleled precision and efficiency. The research, led by Jeffrey A. Bennett and Millard Abelazani from North Carolina State University, delves into the intricacies of precursor selection, a critical step in the synthesis of these materials. By meticulously analyzing phase diagrams, the scientists have uncovered a set of guiding principles that can be applied to a wide range of inorganic oxide systems, revolutionizing the way these materials are produced. The true power of this approach lies in its versatility, explains Abba Lazani, the lead author of the study. By decoding the information hidden within phase diagrams, we've unlocked a universal language that can be used to design and optimize the synthesis of an extensive array of inorganic oxides, from energy storage materials to advanced ceramics. The implications of this discovery are far-reaching, as it promises to streamline the development of cutting-edge technologies across various industries. From high-performance batteries to innovative electronic devices, the ability to precisely control the synthesis of inorganic oxides opens up a world of possibilities. This is a game-changer for the field, says Bennett, co-author of the study. By harnessing the power of phase diagrams, we can now overcome long-standing challenges in material synthesis, paving the way for unprecedented advancements in both fundamental research and real-world applications. The researcher's innovative approach involves the integration of phase diagram analysis with robotic synthesis platforms, enabling a highly efficient and data-driven workflow. This synergistic combination allows for rapid exploration of the vast parameter space, accelerating the discovery and optimization of novel inorganic oxide materials. The beauty of this work lies in its ability to bridge the gap between theory and practice, Abba Lazani continues. By decoding the insights hidden within phase diagrams, we've created a powerful tool that empowers researchers to navigate the complex landscape of material synthesis with unparalleled confidence and precision. As the scientific community eagerly anticipates the broader impact of this groundbreaking research, the team's work stands as a testament to the transformative potential of interdisciplinary collaboration and the unwavering pursuit of scientific excellence. Source. www.nature.com Sustainable Metasurface Technology, Enhancing Smart Food Labeling, Revolutionizing Food Packaging, The Sustainable Metasurface Solution. In an era where sustainability and environmental consciousness are paramount, the food industry faces a pressing challenge to rethink its packaging practices. However, a groundbreaking development in the realm of nanotechnology may hold the key to transforming the way we approach food labeling and packaging. Researchers from Nanjing University have unveiled a remarkable innovation a metasurface-based food labeling system that is not only eco-friendly, non-toxic, and water-soluble but also offers a myriad of cutting-edge functionalities. This metasurface, composed of a unique blend of hydroxypropyl cellulose, HPC, and non-toxic TO2 nanoparticles, boasts a high refractive index, allowing for the creation of vibrant structural colors that can be printed directly onto food packaging, bottles, or even the surface of fruits. The true power of this technology lies in its versatility and security features. The researchers have developed a method to print high-resolution QR codes onto these metasurface labels, providing a wealth of product information to consumers while simultaneously incorporating anti-counterfeiting measures. These QR codes are embedded with discrete micro-patterns, making them virtually impossible to replicate or peel off, ensuring the integrity of the labeling system. But the benefits of this technology extend far beyond authentication. The QR codes also serve as humidity indicators, alerting consumers to potential food spoilage and safeguarding the quality of the products. When exposed to high humidity levels, the metasurface-based QR code undergoes irreversible damage, permanently disappearing and warning the user of potentially unsafe conditions. The implications of this sustainable metasurface technology are truly transformative. By addressing long-standing challenges in the food industry, such as extending shelf life, reducing waste, and enhancing safety standards, this innovation has the potential to revolutionize the way we approach food packaging and labeling. Moreover, the researchers have laid the groundwork for further advancements, exploring the integration of eco-friendly metals and artificial intelligence to address the current limitations in color brightness and discernibility. As the world becomes increasingly conscious of the environmental impact of our daily choices, the emergence of this sustainable metasurface technology couldn't be more timely.
It not only safeguards consumer rights and bolsters product credibility but also paves the way for a more sustainable future, with promising prospects for expansion into healthcare and environmental monitoring applications. The future of food packaging has never been brighter. With the Nanjing University Research's groundbreaking work, the industry is poised to embrace a new era of smart, secure, and eco-friendly labeling solutions that will redefine the way we interact with and consume our food. Source www.nature.com Unveiling how plant root compounds influence bacterial biofilm formation. Unraveling the underground symphony, how plants orchestrate microbial harmony. In the intricate tapestry of the rhizosphere, where plant roots and soil microorganisms intertwine, a captivating story of chemical communication has emerged. Wasim Raza and Gao Fei Jiang, two renowned scientific journalists, have delved deep into the fascinating world of root volatiles and their ability to manipulate bacterial biofilms. The rhizosphere, a delicate balance of plant and microbial activities, is a hub of dynamic interactions that sustain the delicate equilibrium of our ecosystems. Within this underground realm, volatile compounds act as the language that plants and microbes use to converse, coordinate, and even collaborate. Kalkani and colleagues' groundbreaking research, as reported in Nature Chemical Biology, has unveiled a remarkable revelation. The root-derived volatile compound, methyl jasminate, MEJA, serves as a potent orchestrator, shaping the composition and function of the soil microbiome. Through a series of ingenious experiments, the researchers have demonstrated that MEJA, a key signaling molecule in plants, has the remarkable ability to trigger the formation of intricate microbial biofilms both within and beyond the confines of the rhizosphere. These biofilms, in turn, emit their own volatile compounds that ultimately benefit plant growth and development. This finding challenges the long-held perception of plants as passive recipients of microbial interactions. Instead, it suggests that plants actively engage in a sophisticated form of below-ground communication, orchestrating the microbial communities that surround their roots through the strategic deployment of MEJA. The implications of this discovery are far-reaching. Raza and Jiang suggest that the versatile roles of root volatiles, like MEJA, extend well beyond their previously known functions in plant signaling and defense. These volatile compounds can now be seen as powerful tools that plants employ to engineer the microbial landscape to their advantage, promoting beneficial biofilms and potentially even deterring harmful pathogens. However, the authors caution that the implementation of these findings in regenerative agriculture practices must be approached with prudence. Large-scale application of MEJA or other root volatiles may have unintended consequences on the delicate balance of the below-ground ecosystem. Careful consideration of the spatio-temporal dynamics, specificity, and potential for resistance evolution is crucial to ensure the long-term sustainability and environmental impact of such interventions. As the scientific community continues to unravel the mysteries of the rhizosphere, the work of Kulkarni and colleagues stands as a testament to the power of interdisciplinary research. By bridging the realms of plant biology, microbiology, and ecology, they have illuminated a new chapter in the intricate dance between plants and their microbial partners, showcasing the hidden symphony that orchestrates the underground world. Source. www.nature.com Navigating the AI implementation process in healthcare, a practical guide, unraveling the complex journey of AI integration in healthcare, a tangible approach. As a renowned science journalist, I am thrilled to share the captivating story of how Duke University Health System navigated the intricate process of implementing an eye-powered sepsis detection tool, known as Sepsis Watch. This remarkable journey sheds light on the real-world challenges and invaluable lessons learned in the pursuit of leveraging artificial intelligence to transform patient care. The quest began in 2015 when health system leaders launched an innovation competition, recognizing the pressing need to reduce inpatient mortality. A team of clinicians proposed the ambitious idea of using machine learning to predict sepsis, a life-threatening condition. Remarkably, their proposal was selected, and the journey to bring this eye-driven solution to life commenced. The algorithm journey map, meticulously crafted through extensive interviews with the project team, reveals the complexities that unfolded at every stage. From the identification of the problem to the development, integration, and life cycle management of the sepsis watch tool, the map illuminates the intricate web of stakeholders, decisions, and lessons learned. One striking revelation was the critical importance of modeling assumptions.
The team's initial decision to limit the data to pre-ICU settings significantly constrained the tool's future expansion, highlighting the need to carefully consider downstream implications when defining inclusion and exclusion criteria. Similarly, the challenge of finding the right definition of sepsis underscored the importance of developing and validating models for multiple outcome definitions, anticipating the evolving nature of disease classification. The journey also shed light on the vital role of stakeholder inclusion. The early oversight of nurse leaders, who play a crucial role in clinical workflows, created tension and complexity during the clinical integration stage. This experience emphasizes the necessity of identifying and engaging all affected stakeholders, from physicians to nursing staff, to ensure seamless adoption and buy-in. Perhaps most intriguing were the insights into the organizational structure required to support the integration of AI tools. The team's efforts to restructure the patient response program, aligning the incentives of the rapid response team nurses with the objectives of the sepsis AI tool, exemplify the transformative changes needed to optimize the technology's impact. This underscores the importance of modernizing organizational structures to accommodate the evolving needs of healthcare technology. As the sepsis watch journey unfolded, the algorithm journey map became an invaluable tool, not only for documenting the complexities of the process but also for identifying generalizable insights that can inform future AI integration efforts in healthcare. These learnings, ranging from technical modeling assumptions to stakeholder engagement and organizational restructuring, provide a roadmap for other institutions navigating the challenges of AI adoption. The story of Sepsis Watch underscores the critical need to move beyond theoretical discussions and dive into the real-world intricacies of implementing AI solutions in healthcare. By meticulously documenting this journey, the researchers have created a tangible case study that bridges the gap between abstract conversations and practical realities, empowering stakeholders and facilitating knowledge sharing across the industry. As healthcare systems continue to grapple with the promise and complexities of AI integration, the insights gleaned from the sepsis watch journey will undoubtedly prove invaluable. This study serves as a powerful reminder that the path to AI-driven transformation is paved with both challenges and invaluable lessons, and by embracing this tangible approach, we can unlock a future where AI seamlessly enhances the delivery of exceptional patient care. Source. www.nature.com Boosting silicon solar cells with advanced photon conversion materials, shining a light on the future of solar energy, a transformative discovery. In a groundbreaking development, a team of researchers has unveiled a remarkable new material that could revolutionize the world of solar energy. This multifunctional phosphor, crafted from a combination of erbium, Er3+, and a terbium, YB3+, ions doped into a Ne, WO4, 2 host, possesses a unique set of capabilities that could significantly enhance the performance of silicon solar cells, SSCs. The key lies in the material's ability to harness the sun's energy in unprecedented ways. By simultaneously harnessing the processes of photon-up conversion and quantum cutting, the phosphor can effectively manage the solar spectrum, addressing a long-standing challenge in the field of photovoltaics. Up conversion involves the conversion of two or more low-energy infrared photons into a single high-energy photon, which can then be utilized by the silicon solar cell. Quantum cutting, on the other hand, is the reverse process, where a high-energy ultraviolet photon is split into two or more lower-energy photons, also contributing to the cell's efficiency. But the researchers didn't stop there. They also endowed the material with the ability to act as a luminescence-based temperature sensor, allowing for precise monitoring of the solar cell's operating conditions. This is particularly crucial, as high-intensity sunlight exposure can lead to elevated temperatures, potentially reducing the cell's output or even causing module failure. The result is a truly multifunctional phosphor that seamlessly integrates these three key capabilities, up conversion, quantum cutting, and temperature sensing, making it a game changer for the solar industry. This innovative approach holds the potential for synergistic effects to maximize the efficiency of industrially produced SSC modules without altering their existing structures, explains Guanying Chen, the study's corresponding author. The team's calculations indicate that the introduction of this multifunctional phosphor could push the theoretical maximum efficiency of single-junction silicon solar cells from the shock liquisa limit of 30% to an impressive 50.69%, a remarkable leap forward. Furthermore, 
The material's impressive quantum cutting efficiency of 173% and its ability to effectively harvest both ultraviolet and infrared light are a testament to the researchers' deep understanding of materials science and their commitment to pushing the boundaries of what's possible in solar energy. While challenges remain, such as the need for experimental verification of the efficiency claims and the limited absorption properties of lanthanides, the researchers remain optimistic. By exploring the integration of these phosphors with infrared and ultraviolet dyes, they believe they can further enhance the practical application of this technology in boosting the performance of silicon solar cells. As the world continues its shift towards renewable energy sources, this breakthrough could be a crucial step in harnessing the full potential of the sun's power, bringing us closer to a sustainable and clean energy future. Source www.nature.com